Let's learn some magic. Today we're going to learn how to make this handy tool, and about selecting the surfaces of blocks to place things on them, and about reading and writing. Before we get started, I have a correction from the previous video. Hex casting was made by Petra, or Petra Cat. I apologize for getting that wrong last time. In my hex grid, I have the ray casting mantra, the sequence of patterns that selects the block you are looking at. To this, I'll add another sequence, a variant on the ray cast mantra. At the end, it uses the architect's distillation rather than the archer's distillation. Architects has the same appearance as archers, but is drawn in the opposite direction. There are now two coordinates, or vectors, on my stack. The first lower vector is the location of this block here. The second, on the top of the stack, is which side of that block I was looking at when I drew these patterns. As before, I can now exit the grid and move away, and the data will stay. The additive distillation sums the two vectors into a new vector. Finally, I cast light, and a light appears on the face of the block. This combination also works with the sentinel spell, like so, and the place mage block spell. Like so. You can also use it to place a block from your inventory. I have a stone to the left of my staff and a wool to the right of my hotbar. In my main inventory, I have 10 stone and 10 wool. I've switched to survival for this part of the demonstration to show it more clearly. Don't worry about my health, I've been testing things for episode 3. The surface selection sequences are the same, then the place block pattern is drawn clockwise, like so. The spell uses the first valid item to the right of your staff and your hotbar. That's a lot of pattern drawing to do some very basic spells. Let's make some tools to simplify the spell casting process. Here are the recipes for the spell book and a focus. The spell book is essentially 64 foci conveniently grouped together. This recipe calls for a chorus fruit, which can be tricky to get, so I'll demonstrate things with foci. To erase and place sentinel, you simply take the sentinel pattern and draw it backwards. To write to a focus or spellbook page, first draw out the hex patterns in your grid. You don't want to cast the spell if you're using a spell, so you will enclose them in introspection and retrospection. Introspection is drawn counterclockwise, then I'll draw the pattern for breaking a block. Because I start with introspection, nothing is added to the stack as I do this so I have to be careful to draw the patterns correctly. And retrospection is drawn clockwise. The patterns need to be drawn in the correct order, but they can be drawn anywhere on your grid. I simply use this linear design to make it easier to follow along. Next, again, with the focus or spellbook page in your offhand, write a scribe's gambit coming around clockwise. The focus now contains the patterns I had drawn inside of the introspection and retrospection parentheses. I can open up my grid and draw a scribe's reflection counterclockwise, and the sequence of patterns appears at the top of my stack. And finally, Hermes Gambit will cast that pattern as though I had drawn it. Crafting the focus with a honeycomb will seal the focus so that it can't be accidentally overwritten. Note, the scrolls I've been using to show the patterns come in three sizes. Write to a scroll, hold the scroll on the offhand, draw consideration, then any design on the grid in any order, like M for Minecrafting Mom, then Scribe's Gambit. And once the scroll is created and placed, right clicking it with an amethyst dust displays how it was drawn. Back to spellcasting. Scribe's Reflection and Hermes Gambit are much faster to draw, but we can do even better. Let's make some casting items. These hold a store of media and can cast the spells contained in them. This first one is a cipher, which is destroyed once its internal media stores are gone. It is trash. This is the artifact, which can be recharged and will use mana from your inventory if it's depleted. If you don't have the materials for crafting an artifact just yet, you can make a trinket. A trinket will have to be recharged once it runs out of media, but it holds a pretty decent amount. 
Begin using a casting item. It needs to be infused. I'll demonstrate with a trinket. This costs about 5 charged amethyst, and an artifact costs about 10. Throw a pile of media on the ground. I suggest using F3B to see Entity Hitbox. We're going to use Scout's Distillation in the Raycast Mantra to select the entity of the media. I know it worked because the media is on the top of my stack there. Then, I need a list of patterns to write to the trinket. An introspection retrospection pair will work to initialize the casting item, but I've got a very simple pattern list this time, so I'll just draw out introspection, scribe's reflection, Hermes gambit, retrospection. Then I cast the craft trinket spell. And I now have an artifact that attempts to read and cast from an item in my offhand. So, with the break block focus from earlier, I can right click with the trinket and break a lot of blocks. Crafting an artifact is done similar to a trinket, but uses this pattern. You'll note that the pattern goes around counterclockwise on each stage. The first, the inner hexagon, then the outer hexagon, then the outside design of trapezoids and triangles. I can also use my casting tool with the spell book. Right for holding the tool, to scroll between the pages of the book, and then I can cast the spell on the selected page. As with the foci, each individual page of a spell book can be crafted with honeycomb to steal them against accidental rewrites. Each page can be named in an anvil. Today, we have gone over selecting the surface of a block and placing things on it, how to read to and write from various hex casting tools, and we've made a handy spell casting device. Next time, how to clear parts of the stack, a look at the greater spells, and the scrying lens. Whoop!